Hello and welcome to my little trip down road testing memory lane. This is another Q&A video. So uh, let's crack straight on with the first question. And by the way, thank you very much for sending them all in and all your comments, they're massively appreciated. So the first one is from JC Whiskers 3415. Thanks very much for your question. Hi Neezy, I love your, I love your presenting style and content. Thank you very much. I have a question for you. Well, a scenario. I'd love to see a test utilizing several different corner types, not separately, with straights included. The test rider would go through each corner, entry, exit, um, using different riding styles. I'd love to see what the comparison is in times between an elbow down, knee down 90s style, and a more upright, knees in but less hanging off method. On a modern bike, modern tires, maybe on something like a twin, um, that is an interesting question actually, isn't it? I guess this um, is really all about the kind of evolution of of riding styles in the last, well, what, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years really, from a style that's kind of evolved from, well, if you go back even further really, the kind of the Mike Howard style where you, you're sitting in the middle of the bike and you're not hanging off at all. I think we said before, that's kind of evolved into the, the Kenny Roberts style, the first of the generation to really hang off. Then you've kind of got the late eighties, early nineties, do and Schwant style where the bikes didn't have a lot of grip. So the riders would sit over the bikes like a motocrosser and be able to control the slide to a point now where in Grand Prix anyway, bikes have got so much grip, the riders are having to hang right off the bikes to, to stop them grounding out basically and use all the the um, the grip they've got and they don't need to sit on top of the bikes as much now because of the grip and because of electronics and that kind of thing um <clears throat> i think that to a point um a bike if you're talking lap times not corner speed if you're talking lap times around a track that's got various different corners in it i don't think the riding style would make much difference to a point um so whether you're kind of hanging off like Marquez or pushing the bike down like Schwantz or sitting dead in the bike, I think maybe up to, you know, 75, 80% of, of the speed through a corner wouldn't make much difference. I think where the modern style is going to be better is being able to kind of ride more safely at the limit. So if you were to hang off in the corner, then obviously you're going through a corner at a given speed with the bike more upright than you would do if you were sat right on the bike where the bike's more lent over. Um, so I think you would find more speed at that absolute limit. So on a track. So I think for the road, regardless of your riding style, I think you could you can get through corners just as fast depending on how you ride. It doesn't really matter. But then there's the, the safety aspect. If you are leaning off the bike a little bit on the road, then you are making it a little bit more upright. You are giving yourself a little bit more safety and room for error. Um, and also different riding styles suit different people. You know, some people don't like hanging off. Some people feel more comfortable sitting in the middle of the bike. Some people feel more comfortable counterbalancing. So yeah, it's a, it's a big can of worms, isn't it? But I think also, you know, if you just separated a corner out and to see what could go through a corner the fastest, it would kind of go against the grain of how you need to ride fast around a track anyway. Because, well, depending on the size of the bike, on track you'd need to deliberately go slowly in the middle of a corner to be able to use the power of the bike to come out. So that kind of adds another, another kind of layer of complication in, doesn't it? You know, unless you're on something small like a ZX4RR or a 125 or something like that, then you've got to go through the corners as fast as you can. And, you know, probably a modern riding style is better because you can, you know, you can use more tyre grip because you're more upright in the middle of the corner. Um, so to conclude, I don't really think it matters how you sit on a bike to a point, whatever's m most comfortable for you. Um, 
some people are going to find some styles easier than others but when you get to the absolute limit like on the track like when we used to teach at the Haslam school one of the first things to do would be to teach people body position because generally a road rider that goes on track rides with their arms too straight so they're pushing the bike down on the side of its tire and they're not hanging off and they're not they're not leaning over the front and they can go very fast to a point and then it starts to become dangerous then you've got to sit them down and say look you need to change what you're doing or else you're going to crash so uh, that that's where the body position really comes in you know at the limit from a safety point of view really and a little bit performance as well of course lifting the bike up out of a corner is going to give you more grip and acceleration as well and trail braking so there's all those things at the limit where a modern riding style is better basically um but there you go thank you very much for the question that's really interesting that one thanks joel um, this one is from Mark Hind 6187. Thanks for your question. According to MCM back in the day, my 17 year old current bike was dull and boring. <laughs> a tag responsible for years of poor sales and jokes. Yes, it is a Honda. I wonder how different a current day test would be for a similar bike. I think it would be very different due to PR, as most bikes tested now seem to be far too complimentary. Let's not upset the manufacturers who invite us to test their bikes. Um, thoughts? That's a really interesting uh, point. Few, few little things to unpack there. So first of all, I want to know um, what Honda you've got that we said was dull and boring. <laughs> uh, I dread to think. Um, <clears throat> It's a Honda. I wonder how different a uh, current day test. Well, there is kind of a current day test on a similar bike. Um, we rode a couple of years ago, which is the Honda NT 1100, which is a fantastic touring bike, but not the most exciting. But, and we've said as much, but it hasn't um, affected sales at all. I think that bike is one of the most successful touring bikes in Europe over the last few years. Maybe not in the UK so much, but you see a lot of them in Europe. And, and why not? They're, um, I suppose they're a modern day take on a VFR 750 or 800. They're a bike that, well, it's not, not as good as them because it's not a V4, but um, yeah, very dependable and very easy to ride, very comfortable, just gets you from A to B with, with no fuss. So, you know, I'd say the NT is one of those bikes. Um, of course, MCN road tests do shape sales, um, but I don't think they'd be responsible for poor sales and jokes. There must be a little bit more to it than that. But um, it's interesting what you say about, you know, the PR side of things. Yeah, I think PR influence nowadays, we've said before in these videos, is very, very strong. And I think it's a you know proper motorcycle journalist's job to absolutely ignore the the strength of the PR machine when you're on a launch, you know, and not get involved with their narrative, you know, take the bike for what it is. Um, there's no um, no pressure from within inside MCN and Bauer to ever um, be nice about a bike that isn't nice from you know from a marketing point of view, from an advertising point of view, for for any point of view really. I mean, we're actively encouraged to tell it as it is, you know, and telling it as it is is just your opinion. If you don't like a bike, you can say you don't like it, but obviously you've got to give a reason why and your opinion has to be balanced. Um, the motorcycle world has changed a lot in recent times. Um, you know, the, the lines between um, PR and journalism has, has kind of blurred, but, you know, I can't talk for anyone else, but, um, you know, when we go on a launch, you know, it's our job really to get to the nuts and bolts of the bike and, and really sort of dig deep to, to find out what it's like and, and, and give our honest opinion based on the thousands of, of bikes we've ridden before. Um, so, you know, you need to take what we say kind of at, at face value, hopefully, because, um, yeah, it's a, it's an honest opinion with no with no PR arm twisting, shall we say. But um, I wonder if you've still got your, your Honda. I hope you're still enjoying it. <laughs> and I'm sure it's not dull and boring. But great question. Thank you very much for that. Next, it's from Duncan Nor 5926 Thanks very much for your question. 
I'm fresh to riding and have trouble with my foot positioning on the pegs. I prefer riding on the balls of my feet as I can I feel I can move the bike under me much more effectively, although it leaves me doing a sort of a jazz tap dance, constantly moving back and forth on the brake for the brake and the gears. I like using lots of back brake uh, as I'm on a CB500X A2 license only. Gears are a big issue. Thanks for all of these vids. Keep it up. Thanks very much. Um, <clears throat> Foot positioning, it's an interesting one. I mean, that's another thing along with a complete riding kind of body position that's evolved over the years. You can put your feet anywhere you like on the on the pegs and, you know, you can still make a bike work. Back when I was kind of getting into bikes, it was all about tiptoes on, on pegs, riding on the, on the balls of your toes. You know, when you're going around corners, actually putting your toes on the edge of the peg as you're going around the corner. Um, and that kind of style a lot a lot of us still use now and yeah it does mean that you're doing a, a tap dance to reach the back brake and back on the peg and the gears and back on the peg you're always moving your feet back and forth that's that's just how it is um, and that's that's always been so and that will never change but um, you can ride flat footed and still be comfortable so the way I ride now on the road and track has evolved into riding pretty much flat footed. <clears throat> it's also been a necessity because my knees are buggered. But a lot of um, top racers actually have their feet flat on the pegs, flat footed on the pegs, because they use so much back brake, because back brake is such a massive thing now. Um, you know, a lot of riders have thumb brakes, but a lot of riders still have foot brakes and they ride flat footed, so they're always on the, the brake. Um, and the same goes with the gears. You can ride hovering over the gear lever so you can reach it nice and easily. And you don't have to do the, the tap dance thing. All you need to do is, is make sure that your toes are pressed in towards the sort of the, the engine or the frame rail so they don't sort of stick out like Charlie Chaplin. Um, and that flat footed riding position where your feet and your ankles are close up against the frame kind of gives you more of a feeling of control because you're, you, you're gripping the bike more and it also encourages that kind of more modern hanging off style where you're hanging the top half of your body off more than the, the bottom. So for example, on the track, you're not going to be doing this on your CB500X on the road, but on the track you'd have one bum cheek off You'd keep your foot flat footed and you'd, you'd lift your whole head and shoulders off the side of the bike. Um, and it's actually more comfortable to do that with your, your feet right in against the frame rather than putting your feet out on the edge of the peg on your tiptoes. You've kind of got more of an A-frame thing going on. Um, so you're not going to be hanging off as far on the road. But if you pivot from bum cheek to bum cheek as you're going around corners, and bend your inside arm a little bit, it doesn't have to be an extreme movement, and have your feet flat footed, I actually find it a really nice controllable way of, of riding. So may, maybe give that a chance and then you can always reach your, your braking gears without the big um, river dance on the pegs. So uh, let me know how you get on. Thanks very much for the question. Next is um, from Distastic. Thanks for your question. Uh, another great vid, thank you very much. I love your channel and always look forward to the next instalment. Lovely. Um, I've got a V4 Pikes Peak, ride it uh, on the road all year round, and track, first outing with the Fast Group tomorrow, which you've probably done by now, hope it went all right. Um, I'm currently using the standard Rosso 4s, uh, third iteration has one more track day left in them. Um, use the full tire on track, scrape the pegs, I've chewed up both edges, I'm wondering if I could get away with a sports touring tyre, like a Metz or a Rotec 01 SE. I seem to recall you rated them highly, and it would be great if they could do a wet winter UK roads as well as Donington. Keep up the great work. Some of us would be lost without your content. <laughs> Cheers, Ridge. Well, that's a very nice thing to say. Um, I would say tra um, sports touring tyres are fine on the track. And the reason I say that is because we've ridden on track a lot with, with them. I remember the launch of the Pirelli uh, Angel GT was actually done half on track. It was at the um, the proving ground at Nardo in Italy. Nardo have got this massive eight mile um, speed bowl basically. 
um, where they all the big manufacturers, car and bikes, go there to test their bikes. And there's also a really, really cool handling circuit there, um, which I think is owned by Porsche. And it's kind of a, a mini Nürburgring, but without the massive elevation changes. Um, if you actually um, dig out an old MCM video where we test a MV F3800 against a G6R 750 and a Ducati 848 Evo, we're on that track. You can see it. It's a brilliant. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so we were riding sports touring tyres around the track there on super bikes. And the sports touring tyre steers a little bit slow, more slowly. Um, the tyres are physically heavier because they've got more tread on them, um, so they last longer. So the, the steering input, you need a little bit more steering input. And they're obviously not quite as grippy at the limit. But, you know, once you kind of cut the cloth to suit, they're fine. They're not dodgy or by any means. And if you're riding around a cold track, they're actually probably better than normal tyres because they warm up straight away and they definitely don't need tyre warmers. Um, and on damp tracks as well, they'll be, you know, fine. I've even seen people at club races use sports touring tyres um, for kind of as intermediates sometimes. So they're really, really good. And the other reason I say it is because in my eight years of instructing at the Ron Haslam Race School on Fireblades, um, sports touring tyres was all they used. So they started with Bridgestones and then ended up on Dunlops. And um, the reason they use sports touring tyres is because they ran all year round. They'd run in all weathers, um, hot and really cold, generally really cold. Um, and obviously they can't, they had hundreds of bikes there, they can't keep changing tyres with the weather, when the weather changes. So um, we used to ride fire blades around the track on sports touring tyres. And to be honest, unless you were going absolutely gung-ho, they would be fine. And, um, you know, Ron and Leon used to, get around a track very very quickly on sports touring tires so you know and they've evolved now you, you can have your cake and eat it with tires you know a sports touring tire of today especially something like the rotec 01 se which is a fantastic tire on the road as well could probably be equal to a sports touring tire or a sports tire of probably like a, a decade or so ago so yeah i'd have no qualms putting them on but you know if you're going to do a real hot track day in the middle of the summer and you and you you want performance obviously a sportier tire is better but as a compromise for the cold and the wet definitely you should go for it um and you know v4 pikes peak is a fantastic bike um but it's kind of never going to be on super bike you know someone's got a dedicated track day super bike it's never going to be with them anyway is it so you know if you're a second slower than you would have been on sports tires or two seconds slower then it, it doesn't matter does it but um, great question, um, and let me know how you get on. Uh, and finally, this is one from uh, Barry Von Grumble. Thanks for your question, Barry. Um, if you can use only one bike for one year for all activities, commutes, holidays, tracks, Sunday blasts, etc., what you're choosing? Thanks, Barry. Aaron. Um, good question. Now, <clears throat> two of my favourite bikes um, immediately spring to mind, but I don't really think they would um, tick all of those boxes. So, you got, I suppose you've got to think of the track, the track element first. So, the only two types of bike worth um, really considering around a track is a sports bike race rep or super bike or a super naked everything else you can take around the track but you're not going to have that absolute distilled down amazing fun on them so that discounts my t-max that i was going to choose um so that's one consideration but then you want to be able to tour on it so it kind of takes the super bike out of the equation so then you're left with a uh, super naked so a super naked fantastic around track um, and you can take it on holiday I've taken my super naked to, to abroad loads of times if you put a tank bag on it kind of acts like a mini fairing and, and they're really really comfortable um, I would immediately say um, my one of my favorite super nakeds is a Tuono and 
I almost gave that as my final answer, but I think over the past few years, we've been spoiled with um, fancy TFT dashes that um, you can link into your phone and use um, the phone sat nav or like the, a bike app sat nav. Um, and also you've got bikes with heated grips and the Aprilia doesn't really do any of those two things, but definitely hasn't got heated grips. And um, I don't think you can use those flashy um, maps. Has got cruise control though, which is good. So I think the bike I'm choosing is going to be the, the, the standard, not the M, S1000R. So it's, a, it's not the best Super Naked, um, but I think it would do all those things really, really well. So stick, put some sticky tires on it. It'd be amazing around a, a racetrack, maybe a little bit soft, um, not as good as an M1000R obviously, but for touring, better than an M1000R because it's it's less aggressive and it's softer. I think of out, out of all the super nakeds, it's the most comfortable. You've got heated grips, you've got cruise control, and they've got a really, really nice dash, probably still one of the best dashes BMW do, um, that you can link your phone to and you've got turn by turn sat nav um, so yeah i think i would have one of those they're not the probably not the nicest looking bikes are they um but you know not the obvious choice but they've definitely got something about them on it their 160 odd bhp is more than enough for the road isn't it and the track so you've got something that's fast they sound great they're comfortable fantastic brakes they've got everything really i lived with one for a year and absolutely adored it so uh the question is what would you choose um but anyway thanks very much for the question um thank you for all your questions and all your comments and stay tuned for the next video coming soon see ya